Well, hello everyone. I know it's been a very long time for you guys. It's been a very long time for me as well. But I hope you all of you are doing well and everything's safe, keeping yourself healthy. Um, I just wanted to make a short video about my first folklore British kit because obviously I've been I haven't been making a video for a very long time and I decided to well it's time to entertain you guys for some stuff. Well, um, yeah. Let's get started. Basically, this kit itself is actually a 1917 onwards uh, First World War British kit uh, with some bits that aren't really necessarily accurate for my own liking, which will be improved in the future. But currently, I just wanted to make this video so I could show you guys where I'm at and maybe could tell you guys what you shouldn't do and should do comparing with my kit. So, well, let's get started. First of all, my main idea was to actually make a First World War British Gallipoli kit, because obviously my main interest is earlier First World War, Ottoman and uh, France that the Ottomans fought in. And in order to do that, most of my kit was supposed to be early First World War kit, along with webbing and uniform equipment stuff. So as you can probably kind of see there, I also have a pith helmet, a British pith helmet. Um, so most of the stuff I bought were pretty early war stuff. So not really 1917 stuff. So we're going to see it here as well, just just as a disclaimer. So basically, from the st starting from the top, uh, the top, I have a Second World War Mark II helmet. I know, I know, there are people who actually use original World War One helmets refurbished with good repro liners, but the thing is, Mark II's are pretty much exactly the same as the Mark I D type uh, First World War British helmets, the Brody helmets or the Tommy helmets. Obviously, since this is a Second World War helmet, excuse my stupid hair, I sadly have the incorrect Second World War reproduction liner from Soldier of Fortune with the, the canvas ch chin straps. I will be getting probably getting a new uh, shell and a good liner and chin strap for an actual First World War helmet uh, reproduction, which will be nice. But just just saying it, the Mark II's are pretty much the same as the Mark I's, except the chin strap and maybe maybe the 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 obviously the rim around the around the uh, the cut and the general shape which is really close there are some people argue about it all the time online but just to be safe just you can still use a mark II, i guess obviously change the liner and the chisel well the main uniform that i'm basically wearing is actually a 1902 uh reproduction tunic and obviously trousers from soldier of fortune which is obviously also sells the same stuff as what plus what price glory and i would suggest both shops for webbing, I would suggest more Price Glory, uh, but it is a faithful reproduction, at least to the most of the originals you see. Um, it is obviously in khaki wool, it is quite warm, it is quite itchy, but it's all right because I'm wearing the wool flannel shirt, which is which is in flat wool flannel, and it's better than wearing this coarse wool, uh, wool jacket on by on your skin which is I know because it kind of itches but you know what can you do um obviously it, it is quite a nice jacket and I do like it because I can actually use it for Ottoman and Turkish nationalist uh during the the later stages of the first world war and the post-war period because these were captured in droves in both in at Gallipoli and at Kut by the Ottomans so that is something to keep in mind that you might find an Ottoman wearing a British tunic, just say it. Um, obviously, one thing that I need to mention is the rifle that I'm carrying. You might have noticed something weird about it. Well, it, it is weird because it is a dummy rifle. It's not a real Lee Enfield by any means. It, it's just it's just a, a, it is a movie prop essentially because it was made for a movie. Yeah, it was made for a Turkish movie uh, called uh, Last Ottoman Knockout Ali, which is, to be honest with you, one of the best Turkish films ever made, a period film ever made, actually. It is comedy, it is fiction, but 
it, it, it is fun. I, I would recommend it. There's an English dub version online, so you could probably watch that. Um, yeah, uh, obviously, Turkish laws forbid you to restrict you from buying military surplus firearms, and it is really extremely hard to get the license for actual uh, military firearms. You could get pistols, obviously, but the main interest is a rifle, which obviously I have to make do with this because there's no way I can get an actual rifle in Turkey at least. Well, going back to the equipment that I'm wearing, I have the small box respirator, which is the British First World War, late late World War One uh, gas mask that the British Army and the Commonwealth Forces use. This is a replica from the uh, Soldier of Fortune site. Um, if I know it correctly, and it is not the best, but it is all right. Uh, the 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 hose itself needs to be changed with an actual World War Two uh, gas mask, uh, British Mark Five, I believe, or Mark Four. I can't really remember if correctly or Mark Mark Six. Uh, Second World War is not my strong suit with British stuff, um, but I need to change that. The face piece itself is quite all right, I guess. It just isn't a bit that comfortable to wear. Yeah, you see, I can't really treat it uh, uh, just because it, I had to treat it the hip. It is not really nice if you ask me. But if you read it, it is really, really stiff if you can treat Yeah, right. I see. can't understand it. As I was saying, it is not really easy to speak with these things on. Um, obviously, you have to chew down down to the the inhale well right here, which isn't really, it's like a snorkel, but it isn't really that well molded, which possibly needs to be replaced as well. And one thing to consider is, if you have a moustache like mine, these things mess them up really bad. And putting them back on, into the gas mask bag, which this way, it's not that easy. Oh well, I'm just gonna squeeze it in there, I guess. Well, let's just, yeah, there we go. Let's just like leave it, leave it on as on high alert situation with a gas sack. Yeah, going back to the webbing itself, um, obviously I have a bandolier here, which has no ammunition in it, sadly, obviously, obvious reasons. Um, I think I've seen soldiers using two, but I do have three, but I couldn't find the other two, so I only have, to have this. Um, I would ha like to have another one there, but, well, I don't. Um, the webbing itself, as you can notice, I do have a bayonet, which is not actually, a, sadly, an Enfield bayonet. It is actually a placeholder currently, because I'm trying to get one. But this is, strangely enough, an Arisaka bayonet, as you can probably tell because of the angling of the wood and the metal bits. And it is not in the greatest shape, the greatest of shapes. Luckily, in Turkey, you're able to find original Lienfield bayonets. I wonder why. I mean, it's not that as if something happened at Gallipoli. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, they're really popular. You can find them. Uh, Reasonable prices as well, even the Quillian ones. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to get one of those. Um, the webbing, as I've said, is not the greatest because this is from uh, IP, uh, International Military Antiques. I got it from years ago. This is the Indian made or versions, which is not the exactly the right thing you want to get. Um, you probably would like to get the What Price Glory uh, webbing sets which are far accurate with the uh, the webbing quality and the other general color itself, actually. Uh, but what I did was basically blanco it, just like any other British soldier would have done in the First World War, which is, for some reason, most reenactors don't really bother uh, with, you know, blancoing their kids. I have no idea why. Obviously, people disputed about stuff like Oh, they wouldn't have done it because, you know, they're in the front lines and you have to buy it and it's just, you stand to see light colored ones. Yeah, right. But, you know, regulations and stuff. It is highly disputed. But if you have a 
not the greatest quality kit like mine, I would suggest using the Blanco because of a Blanco pretty much hides most of the imperfections if you ask me and makes it look uniform. Yeah, I mean that was the main purpose of Blanco anyways. Right, um, I obviously have my infraction tool health carrier stick bits and the infraction tool right here. Stuff like that. I have my, I don't know if you can see it, I have my canteen which is empty because Soldier of Fortune canteens rust. I have been having this issue. I've been trying to clean this up in order to drink from it, but they rust and I have no idea how to properly clean, to get the rust out to make it safe for drinking. Perhaps I can pull some beeswax into it and make it safer to drink, but I honestly don't know what to do, to be honest with you guys. Um, well, I hope this is going to be really interesting. You can obviously can tell that I'm wearing puttees, which are seven to eight feet long uh, piece, strips of cloth, woven cloth most of the time, but sadly most modern reproductions are just cutouts. And I have used uh, a special technique, which is obviously twisting it to make it fit better into my leg and also bloused my tr trousers because they would have done it accordingly. Um, I'm also wearing British Championship uh, B B5 Emma boots, which are mandatory, obviously, for a British ship. Right? And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously. But to talk about this, mess kit. Well, never eaten from it, made some heart attack. You can probably hear it. Um, it is an interesting piece of kit. The way they attached the thing with uh, basic soldering makes it, you know, if you put this in a very hot flame, it will basically come apart, which is really interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, that's it, pretty much. Uh, this is obviously just a ba battle order dress. I also have a large pack and other stuff that needs to go into it, but. The basic kit is this if you wanted to a uh, western front type of stuff uh, obviously i would suggest improving getting better uh, webbing equipment and obviously getting a real rifle if possible than a helmet but yeah this is it actually well at least i can say is thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed if you have any questions please comment them below and if you have any ways that I can improve this kit, please do tell. I would really appreciate your help and well, see you guys on the next video. Ciao.